Durban, a beautiful place with warm weather, surrounded by the Indian Ocean. In all its glory, it's home to many species of fish. Man's appetite and greed for fishing is increasing drastically to the point that we have been faced with the threat of depleting the ocean stock. I think overfishing in Durban and certainly the general KZN area is, is a big problem. I think we've got a, a massive poaching problem and I think overall we're probably one of the hotspots in the country compared to anywhere else. I don't think overfishing is worse. Reason being this is a seasonal type of uh, fishing ground. People come here mostly when the shad is on the run or certain species of fish that's on the bite. In Durban there is overfishing taking place. We do a lot of poaching, catch a lot of shad. You know, in order we sell them to make our ends meet at the end of the month because we are unemployed. I've seen it, a lot of people do poach fish, 100% right? Uh, but it's their living. I can tell you now, our biggest problem with overfishing is not the small recreational fishermen. It's these Chinese trawlers, you know, we heard about it. It's a problem all over the world, I believe, with big countries, with big fishing vessels and, and possibly jurisdiction in the, in the international seas to come around and fish in these areas. These vessels are huge and their nets are massive. So within one haul, they can haul up tons and tons of fish. The fishing trawlers have sort of like factories in them that actually uh, cut off all our fish chop them up, can them up and take them back to the countries. Chinese trawlers have affected our water by um, they're coming and they're netting most of our fish and our catches before even our, our, our annual sardines run. We don't see it in Durban anymore. All the guys that used to catch sardines legally, they had a quota for the North, for, actually from Cape Agalas. And about six, seven years ago, somehow they got permission to get some of their quota east of Cape Agalas. So they all came into this side of the coast from, from the west coast and off Cape St. Francis, PE, Mossel Bay. And ever since they started doing that, well, it's like a big pizza. The sardines are there the whole year round, they just sit off deeper. And I mean, there are billions of them. These guys come, it's like one big pizza, and they take half the pizza before you even get the delivery at your door. At present, um, our, our, our governmental policing of overfishing, both recreational and commercial, is sorely lacking. Um, with DAF having come in now, we're hearing all sorts of problems about guys who are aren't sufficiently trained. The parks board were doing their job uh, very fairly. I don't think they were accepting any briberies. I never came across that there. Uh, I think they were shut down because of uh, the government. The government has given the tender to another company. I don't think the government is doing the part uh, because there's a lot of fishing trawlers that do come about and uh, that uh, taking bulk of our fish and leaving limited to the public. I don't think the government is doing enough because they sold our, our fishing rights to Chinese trawlers. There, is, there, there are Chinese trawlers in the water that are bagging all our fish. The trawlers go out to try and catch sardines, you know? The, the, the big, big, big nets they're pulling up. And they're pulling tons and tons and tons and that per vessel, so big problem. Now only the government has found out that trawlers are coming in, they're doing gill netting and whatnot, the case might be. That's how we are, local fishermen, we are suffering. There is no fish out at sea, to be very honest with you. There are quotas set in place for particular species. So you might know of bag limits and size limits. Fishermen and the public can respect the bag limits and the, uh, and the legal size of fish. Uh, but myself, I cannot uh, because I have a family uh, to uh, see to and I cannot, uh, I cannot uh, fish by the regulations. In Isambella were in place in KZN, we had something like 82 ranges in the whole, to cover, to cover the whole coast. And that's, it's just impossible for them to do. Uh, most of the time, we get away with the shed. Approximately every month, I, take out a, I catch about plus minus a thousand shed, uh, which I take home and is sold. Uh, when you're coming out of the back lane, uh, if the police officials are there, we uh, just give them a few shad or some, some maybe like a couple of rands and they let us go. But uh, not uh, with the park spot. The park spot are very hard. Um, it's not physically possible to have law enforcement officials on the coastline all day, every day, monitoring people's catches. So we desperately depend 
on fishermen to be more responsible. And there was recently a photo doing the rounds on social media of two guys posing with beautiful black massa cracker. I believe there were 10 of them in the picture. They were caught in the Alawal MPA, but not on the Alawal Shoal itself. It's in the Alawal Shoal MPA, but not on the Alawal Reef itself. The Alawal Reef itself is a crown area. No one can fish there. We can only, it's only non-consumptive users. So in the Alawal Shoal Marine Protected Area, there are zones where fishermen can fish and they were hopefully fishing in those zones. If indeed it was the two of them, it would be illegal because the, the bag limit of a black mussel cracker is only one fish per fisherman per day. And what amazes me, and uh, probably the scientists will flip me, um, how on earth do they know how many fish are out in the ocean? Especially the pelagic species, the ones that travel. They don't live on a reef. The reef you can do, fair enough. But I mean, Bruce Mann from Ori explained to me how they actually do a vital, how they did surveys over years and they can check how the fish grow and they tag them. But pelagics, those things move up and down the coast. They can only go on what? Catch returns that people hardly ever fall in when they catch something. And that's what they base their figures on. And the rest is all thumb suck. There are closed seasons for certain species like shad. So there's a time when they will come together to spawn along KwaZulu Natal and people are allowed to catch these species in this period. So the rules are very strong. The catches of, 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 of shad during the, the, the closed season, we know all along the beaches at the moment, uh, we're, in the, we're in the second week of the closed season um, for shad, which goes until the end of November. Um, and we're, we're seeing daily, we're seeing guys on the beaches still fishing with, a, with a shad tackle, with a shad bungs, uh, and still taking bags of fish off the beach. When you come to fishing seasons and whatnot, the case might be for shad, like which is a, now is a bad period, you cannot catch fish and whatnot. So we as fishermen, we also don't do that there. We don't poach fish. I fish during the close seasons and the bad seasons, and I also poach. Restaurants and, and fish shops buying the catches from recreational fishermen. This is a problem that spreads right across all three aspects of our recreational fishing, the shore anglers, kayak anglers, and uh, jet ski and ski boat anglers. We know it's illegal to buy or sell for recreational fishermen to sell any of their catch, therefore illegal for anybody to buy their catch. Species like Daga, Cobb, uh, Hilbeck, um, they, 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 they paid huge prices. Tuna is now a big commodity. A lot of these animals are top predators, things like garrick, shad, um, and a lot of the reef fish as well. These animals prey on smaller animals, and a lot of the prey that they feed on would be things like algal grazers. So if we remove these top predators, we might find a huge pr proliferation of the algal grazers and they might have an impact on the bottom habitats by overgrazing on the algae which then affects other species like sea turtles. Um, another impact of course would be the food web impact so taking out those top predators would then result in a niche um, gap in, in, in the food web. In the US where they outfished all the sharks in certain areas. Those areas have now become dead spots um, where the, 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 all the flatfish that stingrays came and ate all the, the, the small mollusks and, and, and shellfish on the reef, which in turn were food to other fish species and filter feeders. And uh, as a result, everything died. The whole area is now a dead area. There's no, there's no life on those reefs. The 74, that is a species that in the 50s and 60s was one of the most commonly um, eaten table fish along Durban and KwaZulu-Natal. And because of overfishing, particularly in their breeding season when they would aggregate to spawn, their populations have crashed to the extent that they've become commercially extinct. You know the Spanish mackerel, we call Cuda? None. You battle not to find to see any. Um, the public who are watching the guys, where they're fishing, what they're taking off their boats and hopefully it'll become a case of you won't be safe if you're, if you're breaking the law. There is not enough manpower to monitor and police those breaking the laws. Man has to become more responsible in his actions towards nature. We need to protect the different species of fish for our generations to come.